Welcome into a special edition of the End the Money podcast for KeelanSelect.com. It's the second one we're doing this week because of the big Haskell Day card at Monmouth Park. There are four graded stakes races in the back half of the card, and that's what we're going to take a look at. Look at. They comprise an all-stakes pick four on a 14-race card for Haskell Day that features the return of Triple Crown winner American Pharaoh. Tom Leach along with Keeneland's director of simulcasting, Jim Goodman, and Jim, let's jump right in with the ninth race, the Windstar Matchmaker, grade three on the turf at a mile and an eighth for Phillies and Mayors, ages three and up. And uh, got a, I'm already sexy coming off a nice win. Can you beat her? I don't think so. I think that uh, I'm already sexy won the last time out at Monmouth, and I didn't listen to – I actually played her a little bit, but I didn't tie the right horses with her. Um, one of the guys that's a partner hit the board stables are the owners of I'm Already Sexy, and it's about, I don't know, 10 or 12 people stable here in Lexington that Anna Sykes uh, put together, and I'm Already Sexy. Uh, I was told she was working really well coming up at Monmouth Race, and she won the Eaton Town at 7-1 to one last time out. Obviously liked the Monmouth track. Uh, I think she finds a fairly easy spot here. I, I, I really couldn't find anything else that could beat her except Testa Rossi. And uh, Tessa Rossi got a lot of back class, ran the Ashland last year, won the Florida Oaks uh, as, a, as a three-year-old, and she's, and she's run well at Parks and at Belmont um, as a four-year-old. But I think I'm already sexy with a race over the track, with uh, enough tactical speed to put her where she wants to, and Paco Lopez seems to fit her well. Uh, Jeru rode her for uh, four or five of her races, but Lopez is now two for two. They really like Paco on this filly, so... I'm going to take I'm Already Sexy with Tester Rossi, Tester Rossi uh, Exacta Box. That's all I'm going to play here. I don't think the other horses uh, match up to those two. And I'm already also going to single I'm Already Sexy in the pick four. I'm going to try to beat her with Tester Rossi. I, I'm like you. I, I think it's those two. I think I might throw in a, a little small Exacta with uh, Cushion and Charm City Girl. But um, I think if you just want to take a stand with those two in horizontals, I, I could be with you on that. I'm going to... Uh, look at Tester Rossi. Her last race was her best ever buyer, and I like that they go to the local specialist Joe Bravo in the saddle. So those two things, and the fact that I'm going to get a little better price on on her, even though she's traded by Chad Brown, than I am off I'm Already Sexy because of that last performance. So I'm going to go Tester Rossi to uh, upset I'm Already Sexy in the matchmaker. Tenth race is the grade two Monmouth Cup. Three-year-olds and up going a mile and a 16th. Uh, Bradister uh, was sensational last time. First start off a layoff, did a 109 buyer on the Monmouth track, and he's going to be a huge favorite in here. But that's matched his lifetime high, and and at uh, at this age, I'm thinking he's probably more likely to go backwards a little than improve. So I'm going to try to beat him with Protonico. It's rare that you get a little value on a Pletcher horse, but I think you might here, and I think his best is good enough, and he's been freshened a little bit, and, and he ran well this spring at Keeneland and Churchill. And uh, because I think they'll pound Bradister so heavily, I'm going to try and upset with Pronic, Protonico, use him with Bradister, uh, Valid, who likes the Monmouth Strip, and uh, and Irish you well. Irish you well loves Monmouth as well. I don't think he's really good enough, but I'll maybe throw him in in a small exacta too. But uh, if I'm going horizontals, I think I'd go uh, Protonico, Bradister, and uh, and Valid. What about you? Yeah, from a win perspective, I think Bradister. Uh, the one, Protonico, the seven, and Valley, the eight, cover you pretty well in the multi-leg wagers. But uh, I kind of like a horse named Freestyler to get the money, the five horse. Uh, I love horses that are horses for courses, and Freestyler is three for three at Monmouth. They're moving way up in class off an optional claimer uh, race last time out. And uh, But I just like the horses. The horse is consistent, 93, 94, 95 buyers, and he's way below – uh, Bradister and Valid, but I think he may go, get overlooked in the wagering. So I'm going to key him second, third the, in the uh, tries. Bradister probably bet to win uh, off that 109 buyer. I mean, you always worry about horses coming back from Dubai, and, and he did suffer uh, in the Godolphin Mile over there. Didn't run a step and came back, and they put him in a hundred thousand dollar claimer at Churchill, and he, and he got the lead and then quit. But then he came back in the Salvatore Mile, and it really looked good. And, uh, I think he's a good bet here, uh, even though he may be eight to five or seven to five, something like that. Protonico has a real shot, and Ballot has a shot. Uh, may may be able to turn the tables on Bradister, but those three in the multi legs freestyler to get in the money a little bit with the five horse. Back to the turf for the eleventh race, the Grade Three Ocean Port. 
Three-year-olds and up going a mile and a 16th on the grass. Who'd you like in here? Hard to separate Carafa the seven and Lochte the six. They ran right together last time out and was trying to figure out why Carafa still got a five-pound weight advantage on on Lochte. So that's that's why I went to him. Um, he he beat him heads up last time out. Lochte always runs his race. He's very consistent. But Carafa may have, if he runs his best, and that that's a 102 buyer at Belmont. Uh, I don't think they're going to beat him in this race. Uh, so I would take, although it seems like we're picking favorites today, Carafa just looks like the best horse in the race. Heart to heart, the five horse uh, intrigues me a little bit. Uh, at Monmouth, the last, the next to last time out, uh, ran a 100 buyer, only got beaten the Red Bank by winning cause, and goes to the Belmont chips to, for the poker and didn't run very well. But coming back to Monmouth, and he seems to have a pattern of, he ran a hundred buyer, then an eighty-eight, then a hundred, then an eighty-seven. If he goes back to a hundred one hundred one, uh, he's going to be right there with with the top two. So I'm going to put him in there as a as a price and in cage fight of the two. Uh, also, might have a shot. Uh, the Monmouth Grade Two got beat by Triple Threat and wasn't really in the race. And but you know the buyers fit, and I thought it might be a price. Carafa the seven, my top choice. Lochte the six, and Heart to Heart the five are my top three choices yeah. in the uh, Ocean Port. Same here for me. I, I can't go outside of that group. I'm going to try Heart to Heart for the win. Uh, last race was a subpar effort, but he's gotten four works since then, and they reach out to Victor Espinosa to take the ride here. And uh, I think they'll just try to go straight to the front and um, try to lead them all the way around there. So Heart to Heart the five is the one I like uh, and use him with Carafa and, and Lochte. I'm going to end my streak of trying to beat the favorite in the <laughs> Haskell, grade one, and uh, you know, certainly don't want to pick against American Pharaoh and, and couldn't in here. And, and uh, you know, Baffert is a guy that, you know, he he's not one to to leave a horse short in a spot in a, in a spot like this. He's tightened the screws, and uh, I think the fact that the horse is here, he's ready to run, maybe not his A race, but, but something close. And... I think anybody that is out there early with him maybe uh, gets cooked, and I, I like Keen Ice maybe to to make a, a strong run if if American Pharaoh's a, even a little off his game, maybe Keen Ice could make it interesting, and uh, maybe you'll get a you know a little bit of a of a price there for the second half of the exacta. I'd use an upstart underneath him maybe as well. Um, all the others seem like it's a it's quite a bit of a of a stretch I think to 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 certainly win or, or maybe even get second what about you well monmouth raised this purse to a million seven hundred fifty thousand dollars and i can't believe they've only got eight horses running because even if you say american pharaoh is going to win second place is three hundred thirty thousand dollars which is a little more than you get to win the jim dandy at saratoga yeah so i i, I don't really don't get it i thought they'd get at least a couple more horses in here and they've got eight that look like they're going to the post and you, and you're right. A couple of them are just throwouts that, you, that can't get there. But I think I think Upstart has a real chance, not necessarily to beat him. But you know, he, the Derby's a throwout. He he got a tough trip. He just didn't didn't run a step. Comes back and works at Saratoga on July 25th, just a few days ago. Four furlongs in 47 and one. First of 109 at the at the distance uh, at, at that day. So. Uh, great work. Uh, you just toss the, the Kentucky Derby and his buyers are 105, 93, 108 in the Florida Derby. So, you know, I think upstart, if there is a chance that American Pharaoh is not on his day game, and if there is a chance that that 13 hour trip took something out of him, upstart would be the only horse in the race that I think has a shot. Competitive edge, if he goes, probably has a shot to get the money. Um, the others, a keen ice probably could clunk up for second, but I'm going to think Upstart might just have a big race in him, and it might be a little more competitive than people think. But I'm not going to bet against American Pharaoh. I'm I'm pulling for him. As we spoke yesterday, we want him to be undefeated this year coming to the Breeders' Cup Classic. So this is the next logical step, and I'm going to be pulling for him and Upstart to run second. Big day at Monmouth Park, and best of luck on your wagers. And then we'll be back next week for another edition of the In the Money podcast at KeelanSelect.com.